Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my top five tips on how to train and recover effectively in the heat. Obviously, it doesn't get this sunny uh, that much in Sheffield. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to share the top five tips if you are training in a heat wave, that doesn't happen too much in the UK. But let's say if you're training overseas, how to uh, do a few little, few little tips to help optimize your training, your recovery, to make sure that you're optimizing your performance, but also reducing the likelihood of fatigue, illness and injury that can often happen when training in hot environments. So tip number one is pretty simple and straightforward, but it's to make sure that you're staying hydrated. Uh, first of all, to make sure you have three litres of water per day. Um, this is around your training, but to make sure that you're covering like any sweat loss during the night or generally just sweating uh, during hot conditions. So a three litres is a, like, try and aim and get a 1.5 litre bottle, try and do some uh, in the first half of the day, try and do some in the second half of the day. Another tip is to make sure that you're pre-hydrating before your sessions, not being reactive in your hydration strategies, but making sure you're proactive because you don't want to be just replacing the sweat loss. You want to make sure that you're uh, being hydrated throughout your session. So making sure that you're drinking your water throughout the day, making sure you're having a glass of water as soon as you wake up to re um, replace the water loss overnight if you're in a hot environment, likely to be sweating in bed, but also to be using some electrolyte tablets. So we recommend the Nutrition X Hydra Plus and have two or three of these tablets a day to replace the, uh, the salt and electrolyte loss uh, during sweat and just making sure you're having one of these in the morning before your session and then two or three throughout the day. So tip number two is to make sure you're monitoring your body mass before and after training. Performance can be negatively impacted if you are dehydrated by two or three percent. We've seen sweat losses between four and five percent just in a single boxing session. So you need to make sure that you're getting a good idea of how much you're sweating, how much water loss you've had in a single session and making sure you're repl uh, replenishing and rehydrating before your second session of the day. So uh, we use a general rule of thumb of 1.5 to every litre loss. So let's say if you sweat out uh, one kilos of sweat and lose one uh, litre of water, you want to replace that with 1.5 litres of water. Like if you lose two kilos, you replace that with three litres of water. So tip number three is to reduce the volume of your training session. Still maintain that intensity, but during like hot conditions, this will increase heart rate, which will increase uh, like kind of time in the red zone and also increase energy expenditure. So with this, obviously there's an increased metabolic cost from the session, which can uh, like accumulate into high levels of fatigue, especially if you're going through a heat wave where it's going to be hot all week. So try and reduce the volume down let's say drop it down by 20 or 30 minutes, but still maintain whatever you were going to do in the session, keep the intensity high, but reduce the volume to make sure that you're optimizing the training, pro uh, training progress, but not taking too much out of your athletes. So tip number four is going to sound a little bit weird. In warmer conditions, we need to extend our warm up more. And the reason why for this is because when the uh, when the muscles are warm they're more relaxed and able to produce more force this is why we get some really good sprint adaptations and strength adaptations in the heat and that's probably why uh, the jamaican running team are, are so good because they're always training in the heat and always exposed to them higher force outputs and high speed outputs as well and this is what we used to do at the, um, when we were based at the university we used to use the heat chamber we used to do sprints and we used to see our pbs there now because they're exposed to higher intensities, high speeds and high force outputs, this means that the, basically the body needs to be accustomed to that and needs to be warm and ready for that. If we just go into a, a general warm up and then go into our session exposing our, uh, our body to increase force outputs and increase speed that the body isn't ready for, this is increasing the likelihood of injury. And I've actually seen this in one of our sprinting sessions where an athlete was absolutely maxing out on the sprints performing probably about five or ten percent faster than what they did on the session before and then the hamstring went so it's a very uh, good tip to have is to making sure that you're extending that warm-up 
if you're doing some sprints outside, making sure that you're doing extra sprint mechanics, extra hamstring work to help protect your athlete from any uh, injuries from training in the heat. So tip number five, and you're gonna enjoy this one, is treat yourself to an ice lolly or an ice cream. Making sure it's a low calorie option, of course, but because of the increased heat, increased energy demands, uh, it's probably likely for you to be able to have a few extra calories and having these low calorie options, make sure that you're feeling like you're not missing out in training camp. Last thing you wanna do is be training hard and then seeing all your friends either in the beer garden or uh, enjoying a nice ice lolly and you're feeling a little bit down that you're still on, a, on your salads and uh, on your strict diets. So having this ice lolly, replacing the, the calories and also the uh, glycogen uh, that you'd likely to expend a little bit more during hot conditions or you can have a, a, a nice cool milkshake as well okay guys so there are my top five tips hopefully enjoy it and hopefully there's gonna be more sunny days like this in sheffield pretty soon